If you somehow watched every video on this channel, by the way, thank you, you would discover quite a few videos starting with Astronomers Discover Incredible Star. Star or planet nobody expected. Mind-blowing discovery from our own galaxy. I mean, at this point, I think I'm making fun of myself. But the point here is that astronomers and scientists in general actually have made a lot of incredible discoveries in just the last few years. Many of them have been completely unexpected and many of them quite mind-blowing. But turns out that there is actually this one star that is super mind-blowing, but that for the most part has been unfortunately ignored until now. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a really really exciting star that once again is somewhat unusual compared to a lot of other stars that's now claimed to be a potential precursor to one of the most mysterious objects out there. An object we often refer to as a magnetar. A strange type of a neutron star with a super powerful magnetic field that today is believed to be responsible for a lot of other mysterious phenomena including things like fast radio bursts or a lot of other really powerful emissions that are usually not explained. But in this case, this is just one potential explanation. Because at the moment nobody actually knows exactly what's happening here and this star seems to be pretty much unique in the entire galaxy. There's maybe one more such star in existence which we'll discuss a little bit later. Either way, this unusual object, referred to as HD 45166 or Anger 1933, is potentially one of the strangest stars we've seen in a very very long time. It's really hard to explain exactly what this is and it's actually unknown right now how or why this star exists. So let's talk about it and let's find out what we actually know. Now first of all this is obviously not the first time this star has been examined and it was originally discovered a long time ago. But it was always believed to be a binary star with two stars in orbit of approximately 1.6 days. But because it possessed a lot of unusual properties it was believed to be what's known as the Wolf Rhea star. A type of really really powerful stars emitting huge amounts of solar winds and producing a lot of types of radiation that very often represent the end stages of various heavy stars right before they go supernova. Although in some cases they also represent the opposite, extremely young stars that are still growing and still developing. Either way though, these are very powerful stars with very powerful emissions, super super hot temperature but are also not particularly stable and stars that do change in time. And here this star was believed to be one of them, with a temperature of about 50,000 Kelvin. Quite enriched in helium, suggesting that it's an old star, but still possessing a lot of strange properties. And so there were actually only a few things scientists were kind of certain about. First, this seemed to be a binary system, with one star way more powerful than the other. Second of all, it was at least several times more massive than the Sun and extremely enriched in helium, with the stars orbiting every 1.6 days. But strangely enough, a lot of other chemical abundances, such as for example carbon, nitrogen and oxygen, were very very different from anything we expected. Completely different from other wolf Rhea stars and even different from planetary nebula or even other stars. So it's sort of like imagining finding this really bright, extremely powerful object, but the actual elements on the inside were entirely different from anything else. Likewise, by analyzing the solar wind, it seemed to be very different from a lot of wolf Rhea stars and even from typical O-type stars. So here the star was emitting things extremely differently as well. And because of this, for the past few years, this was referred to as a QWR, quasi wolf Rhea. A star that seems to resemble a wolf Rhea star, but that seems to have very strange properties. If you actually want to learn more about these Wolf Rhea stars, check out one of the videos in the description. But the thing is, in the last few decades, only a very small number of studies came out about the star, despite its very unusual properties. For example, this was the only known intermediate mass helium star known in the entire galaxy. It possessed Wolf Rhea spectrum, it seemed to be orbiting a B7 type star, and it was also not very massive. Although individually these properties don't mean much, Together, they basically formed a strange, unusual object, something that was very difficult to explain. On top of this, the way that the star was launching its wind and the way these stars orbited every 1.6 days disagreed with previous ideas and previous propositions about star evolution and specifically binary star evolution, once again suggesting that things here just didn't make sense. 
But despite of this, some scientists, like Tomer Schenar from University of Amsterdam, decided to go on a very long campaign to basically discover what the star was all about. You can actually find one of the presentations by Tomer from a few years ago in one of the links in the description. But more recently, an actual study was finally released trying to analyze and trying to understand exactly what sort of an object this actually is. With many of these new discoveries becoming possible because of the spectropolarimetry instrument known as a shell spectropolarimetric device for the observation of stars at CFHT that was able to finally see certain things about the star no other instrument was able to see before. In the process discovering something absolutely incredible. This star seems to possess the strongest magnetic field ever seen in any type of a star that's not a magnetar, with a total strength of approximately 43,000 Gauss, or roughly around 43,000 times as powerful as the Sun. And by itself this presents both a huge mystery and of course a really exciting opportunity to explain one of the more exciting objects in the entire universe, a magnetar. Or basically the scientists now believe that this is maybe a progenitor for a typical magnetar. And they do make a pretty strong case for this. Now previously, before the study, this is what we kind of thought about magnetars. This is an explanation made by NASA. It was believed to be a different type of a neutron star produced as a result of a supernova. Some stars ended up as neutron stars, some stars became pulsars, and some became magnetars. But exactly why certain stars became magnetars and not pulsars was never really known. And magnetars of course are super strange. They're essentially neutron stars with magnetic fields that literally affect space-time around themselves. The magnetic fields here are so powerful that they start producing tiny bits of matter right around the magnetar. They obviously possess a lot of other strange properties, but it was just never understood why some neutron stars become this and others don't. Nevertheless, it was always believed to be a result of a type of a supernova from a star with a specific mass, possibly something similar to Betelgeuse. But the scientists behind the study did not like that explanation, mostly because they did study quite a lot of helium-rich stars before and also because they realized something is really strange about this particular star. Now this is not the first study about the star discovering something strange, here's another one from a few years ago, but this is the first study where conclusions finally started to make sense. First of all, they realized that the observations involving orbits of these stars might have actually been seeing something else. Before, it was claimed that this is a binary system with a 1.6 days orbit. But the new observations imply that this is actually a pulsation from the partner, and potentially even pulsations resulting from powerful magnetic fields. In reality, the orbit here was much, much longer, these stars were really far away, with a single orbit taking at least several years, possibly even tens of years. And the only explanation that made sense why this star was so strange and produced so many effects basically involved powerful magnetic fields. By having powerful magnetic fields, it would have unusual winds, it would also possess very strange effects observed in various studies, and most importantly, it would explain what these types of objects eventually evolve into. But because the star is pretty far away from us, approximately 3000 light years away, it took a while before any of these observations were finally possible. And so the Franco-Canadian project using this instrument was finally able to detect strong magnetic fields coming from this unusual object. And not just strong fields, the strongest magnetic fields from any main sequence star. This basically became the most magnetic massive star ever found. But because the star was only about 4 solar masses, it meant that it's not going to go supernova. As a matter of fact, as it evolves, it's very likely going to end up in a very different state. Now normally, in a star like our sun for example, as it evolves, it eventually reaches a stage where it sort of expels the outer shell, eventually becoming a white dwarf in the middle, surrounded by a planetary nebula. But in this case, as this star evolves, powerful magnetic fields are most likely going to keep it together and will eventually cause the star to collapse under its own gravity, which in the process increases the spin of the star, but more importantly, increases the magnetic field even further. And so as the star ages and decreases in size, it ends up becoming even more magnetic. And so now the scientists believe that eventually, as it collapses, instead of becoming a white dwarf, it becomes a different remnant with an extremely powerful magnetic field, 
with approximately 100 trillion gauss, very, very similar to a magnetar. And the recent observations even suggested that the mass here is probably much lower. This star could be as low as two solar masses, so it's definitely not going supernova. And that's how we believe neutron stars usually form. And so instead, as the star becomes older, it very likely is going to collapse further and further, becoming even more magnetically powerful, and basically eventually turning into a typical magnetar. Now by itself right now this idea and this proposition is actually kind of brilliant. It explains a lot of things and a lot of mysteries all at the same time. But as always, because this is science, we definitely need confirmations, we need additional observations and additional studies, and more importantly, we need additional samples. More similar stars have to be discovered first in order to see if this is what's actually happening here. Now if you look at the presentation I mentioned previously, only one other similar star is mentioned in the study, but in this case it does not seem to be magnetic or possess all of the similar properties. And so at the moment it's not certain if this is the only such star in the entire galaxy, which already makes this super special and very unusual, or if there are other similar objects we're going to be discovering in the next few years. And if the scientists in this paper are actually correct, they also might potentially explain how these types of stars form. It actually seems to be a result of a merger of two smaller stars very rich in helium, which in essence may explain how magnetars are born across the entire universe. And if this is how magnetars are made, one day this might solve a lot of other mysteries, including fast radio bursts. So definitely a pretty cool discovery and a pretty cool proposition. But as always, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And so we're not going to know exactly what's happening here until sometime in the future. And so once we actually know what kind of a star this is and what exactly is happening here, I will definitely make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.